Hello and welcome to Infinity. We're going to look now at the develop persona and the ways that you can use this with Affinity version 2. So let's start off with a file, open recent and get in a raw file. And uh, here we go. So we can do things to this. We want to tweak this a bit. Maybe we'll go to shadows and highlights and just push. See if I tweak, tweak this, this pushes up the top half. So then if I go to brightness, I'm going to bring this up here. And it's not so washed out effect as you get if you use just the exposure. Now, if I think just click development, before I do that, I've got an output here. I've got a choice of how I pass it over to the photo persona. And I can pass it over just a simple pixel layer. So it rasterizes it to pixel. Um, in which it uses the assistant setup here, you go 16 bit RGB. You can also send it over as 32 bit. But we'll just close that off there and leave that at 16 bit. You can use the raw layer embedded, in which it takes a copy of the raw file and embeds that into the AF photo file if you, when you save it. But you can also do a link to one where it doesn't copy it, it simply keeps a link to that file. When you do the linked one, you've got to keep the relative positions of the air photo file and the original raw file close to one another. So have them in subdirectories, for example, or even in the same directory or folder. Otherwise, you can lose the, the, the link between the images. So I thought well, I'd do an experiment with these because what's it going to do in terms of file size? So here we go. So here's the original. It's a Sony RAW file, it's a compressed RAW, which is 42 meg, which is it's quite a big for a single picture, but that's the way we go these days. If you do a pixel layer, then which is the standard version one method, you get a huge difference. Look at this, it's gone up to nearly 270 megapixels or mega, sorry, megabytes on this. These are bytes, not pixels. And uh, in the version two, number two here, I've got the embedded raw. So now I'm going up to the, the output here and put it into embedded. And now this goes up even more to 315 because you've got all the raw information and so on in there. So that's 315 megabytes for one image. I thought, well, what happens if I import it, rasterize it and then save it so that I went to the photo persona, rasterized the raw image, and guess what? It goes back to the original pixel image. So that is perhaps as you might be expected. But the big surprise and the really good news is if you take it as linked, the raw layer linked like this up here, and because it's then linking to that raw file, which is outside, it's one megabyte because all it's saving is the adjustments that you make to it. Of course, if you do add in pixel layers and, and so on, you can do this. But with basic adjustments, all I did was I brought the kid thing. I went to the, the photo persona and I saved it from there. And that's what it went down to. And I, I even did the same. I duplicated so I had two copies of that, that linked file in there. Very little difference. So if you want to keep .air photo files without them clogging up your hard drive or, or uh, other space you use, this is a really good way to do it. But you've got to be disciplined about that. OK, next one. Let's look at what we do here. So we'll go to the linked file here. We'll keep it linked. And I go to develop. So I'm going to develop. I'll do a little bit here first. Oh, well, what I was going to do is going to get the, the blemish removal tool here and I go down to this right square bracket so I can drag, click on there and then drag it to where I want it to copy from. And then it'll blend that in there. So I'm fixing that dust bunny here. OK, so now let's do a develop. And now I can do things to have a look at this. If Here's the thing is, if I want to say, how do I know whether this is a raw file? Um, because it's just the file name where it came from. If I hover over the left there, it says raw. But often the cursor is sitting on top of it, so I can't see it. So the thing to do is put the cursor in at the bottom and move the cursor up 
And there you go, that tooltip which says it's a raw file is now quite visible. That's a, a little tweak. To go back into the develop persona, there's three ways to do that. One is to just double click the icon there and notice it, it does take a while to get there. So hang on, be patient with it. So I'll go cancel to go back to the photo persona. I can do the same. I can go to the develop persona and just click here. There we go, back to the develop or the cancel out of that. And the third way is go to the move tool and click on develop image here. And now with this being able to go back, I can go back and tweak and adjust things here. So let's go back into here. One of the things I, I didn't mention in the overview, but it's worth just re-mentioning here, is if you do anything to try and write on this layer, for example, doing cloning or in paint and so on, the assistant will convert this into a pixel layer. You can still carry on doing it, but you'll then have an embedded pixel layer and you won't have the benefit of being able to go back and readjust the things you did in the raw persona. In the develop mode, you can also got get a, th a thing called show layers. And I'll show you what happens with this here. So if, for example, I put now a, let's put a curves on here. And first of all, I'm actually going to drag it above here. So I'm just going to darken the picture because this is going to show how it works with this. So I put on that there down here and I go to a, just go back to the develop persona this way. I'm going to select a layer. I've got, I've got to select that one. That's the one. So now you can see here, this has got the darkened image. So it's taking that curves into account. If I click on the show all layers here, because that normally is, is left on, turn that off. Now I've got back to looking at just the develop, the developed raw image in that photo stack. And that puts that back on again. So I've just cancelled back to here. So that show layers, I can turn on and off what's up here. But watch what happens now. If I put that down there as a child, so I dragged it onto that. So this is now a child of this. Same effect, looks the same. But now if I go back up here, and if I turn the show layers here on and off, there's no effect. And it's because this is a child, so it's treating this as a layer. So this is going with it. So that's a question. Is that a bug? I don't know, because if you look at this here, now if I put in, say, something like a, um, let's put up a vibrance here, and that's so this goes and drag that above. So that appears above here. So this calculates the curves first and then it puts in the vibrance. And then I'll turn down in the here, the saturation here goes so that the flowers now are not standing out so much. I've done it for quite a significant effect so you can tell the difference. And I now click on the raw layer and I go back up here to the develop persona. Now, if I click on the show layers, turn that on and off. See, I'm turning on and off the vibrance, but, I, but I'm keeping the curves. So I go back down to here. So in other words, when I'm doing that show layers, it's keeping the curves here, but it's turning on and off the curves above. So in other words, if you want to go back and do a show layers, then you want to understand that what you put down here as a child won't be changeable. What it, it, you put above is, and that's something you might actually want to do. And you can might find that useful. You can also do multiple layers on here. So I'm just going to go down to the history and go back to the beginning on this. So I can take that, hit Control J, and I got a duplicate layer here. And so I can do different things with this. So I can, for example, I can put a mask on this. So let's put the bottom one on here. Then I'm going to put a, let's put a basic curves on that and just kind of just darken that one. A bit you can't see it's turn off the top layer there I can see through what we're doing now put that one there now I could do with the top layer on this 
let's do a going to just select an area of this so let's I'm not going to select the sky because actually the sky is tricky because of the trees and the color how light this is here so let's just go into the statue here so I'm going to go to the statue and I'm going to go to the selection brush I'll do this fairly quickly so I've got snap to edges on here and I'll just kind of like go down over this and then make a bit smaller to get in the small bits I'll click to go back the other way so this is a very quick one you, you could also do a refine in here but I'm just doing a very very quick select around here it's a little bit of a, a fiddle but that will do so I've selected this here so now what can I do I can put in a mask but I'm going to turn this one underneath off so you're just seeing the top one so that when I put in a mask here mask layer just put a straightforward mask see it's cut this out it would be a bit smarter if it was refined and so on so in other words this layer here which is a copy of a linked layer so it actually takes up very very little space we've got this here so i can hit ctrl d now and i can apply oh what shall i put to this one here let's do a little bit of sharpening on it so i go to the yeah, let's go to unsharp mask turn up the radius to one ish and turn up the factor there so you're making that sharper then when i turn on the layer underneath you can see i've got this sharpened part of the image but i've done this through two things yes there are different ways of of doing this let's drag that unsharp onto the there so it's only doing that as it should do so i've got this first layer up here this layer is the sharpening and the next one down here is the slight darkening so in other words you've got the ability to use multiple layers like this also what you can do is, is that sharpening you can also do that in different ways so for example I'm just going to go back here I'm going to take the unsharp mask right click that and delete that so I've still got that selected here but now here's another thing you can do is so if I go now back to the develop persona and if I go to the show all layers here turn this off so that's turned off everything else that was in the photo persona I'm only seeing this one raw layer and also the other raw layer underneath is different so if I look at this one now I can just adjust this one here and I can go to to details here and I can do the detail refinement here so if you prefer the way it does sharpening here you can use this in this sort of way so I can turn up the radius here and turn, turn up the amount and look at the difference that makes in terms of sharpening so I look at this and it's, it's actually gone a little bit over there so those little burn points so I could go back to the basic here and I can turn the exposure down a bit so to turn those those back a bit to get rid of those maybe even go down to the highlights and turn those down a bit and then go back to the details maybe I can play with this a little bit more and so on but you, you can play around with this because what I'm doing is I'm using that just single way of doing things so i'm doing the, the sharpening it's another way of doing sharpening in the layer by masking it off with a copy so that when i develop again it'll take me back and now i've got this adjusted like this so in other words there are many ways that you can do this you can use it for different purposes um, one more thing let's just do this one go double click on this to go back to the, the develop and I can do things like this just to show we can do the other things as well I'm going to go to the overlays here and I'm going to put in a gradient overlay and I can just go down from the top here so that shows me what I'm doing with this go back to the basics when the overlay there's not so many things you can do but I could do things like turn down the moment you hit something is that that red's going to disappear so I'm going to turn down the exposure bit maybe turn up the whiteness a little you know brightness a little bit here but what we've got now is 
we're putting a bit of a gradient into the sky here and then develop that so you can use those overlays as well in other words all the features that you can do normally in, in the raw layer and the develop persona you can do and have and go backwards and forward to it so there we go that's a few more things that you can do within the develop persona and going backwards and forwards to the photo persona and a really good thing that i'm certainly going to be doing is to use the linked copy so that i can then keep my dot air photo files and not have them clogging up large amounts of disk space that's it and thank you very much for watching